Jesus. The Giver of Rest. Sabbath School Lesson 5 Rest is the main topic in Hebrews 3 and 4. It's a special kind of rest that's been offered but not achieved yet. Some people already enjoy it, but most haven't. It's the same one as Adam and Eve enjoyed just after creation. We will enjoy this rest the day we will enter the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Hebrews 11, 10 The rest that was offered to Israel But when you cross over the Jordan and dwell in the land which the Lord your God is giving you to inherit, and he gives you rest from all your enemies round about, so that you dwell in safety, Deuteronomy 12, 10. God offered Israel two types of rest, a physical place to rest, and a moment in time to rest. Abraham was promised that his descendants would live in Canaan, from the river of Egypt to river Euphrates. Canaan would become a second Eden where God and Israel would enjoy rest and common company. First, they would have to expel those who had gone beyond the limits of evil, and to fully remove idolatry from the land. On the other hand, God gave them Sabbath as a special moment to remember creation and redemption, thus enjoying divine rest. Israel did not enter that rest. For who, having heard, rebelled? Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt, led by Moses? Now with whom was he angry forty years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who did not obey? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Hebrews 3 16 to 19. The people who were led from captivity with Moses saw some amazing miracles. These amazing acts of God included the plagues, the parting of the Red Sea, manna from heaven, and water from a rock. And yet, it is recorded that only Joshua and Caleb were strong believers and had faith in God. The others spread their unbelief rapidly throughout the people. Their faith quickly faded and they were afraid. Hebrews encourages us to strengthen our faith and not be weak. Therefore strengthen the hands which hang down, and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but rather be healed. Hebrews 12, 12 and 13 If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, then you too are on a journey to a land that is better than Canaan. It will be the ultimate rest. Keep your eyes on that promised land. We need to stay strong with faith in an ungodly world. We should live like we are not of this world. Prepare yourself each day to enter the true holy land. When will we be able to enter this final rest? Again he designates a certain day, saying in David, Today, after such a long time, as it has been said. Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Hebrews 4, 7 The rest God promised to Israel, and to all humankind, was not fully given when Canaan was conquered and not even when Israel controlled all the promised land in times of David and Solomon, because the people of God were still idolatrous. God kept urging his people back to enter his rest. He invites us, today to enter that rest. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. Hebrews 4, 1 Listening to God's voice is emphasized in Hebrews. 
God has been faithful to us. Jesus has defeated his enemies. We can now come boldly to the throne of grace. His imitation is something to be accepted, today. The Sabbath commandment asks us to remember what God has done for us. The Israelites were to keep the Sabbath as a reminder of being delivered and freed from slavery. God's work in that respect was finished. But these only pointed to Jesus on the cross, when he said, It is finished. The Sabbath is very meaningful for Christians. The Sabbath commemorates God finishing his work at creation, the Exodus, and redemption in Jesus. Jesus was the final sacrifice. God rests only after he has delivered his people. The Sabbath invites us to look at what happened in the past. We are encouraged to rest on Sabbath so that we can remember and celebrate all that God has done for us. From creation, to redemption, to freedom from the bondage of sin. Did you know the Sabbath also calls us to think about the future? Remember there is a new Sabbath rest for God's people. One he is preparing for the future. When we pause from our lives on the Sabbath, we should take hope in God's promises of the future when we will enter into a final, perfect rest. On Sabbath, let us rejoice about heaven and a new, perfect earth. Sabbath keeping is not being legalistic if done and observed correctly. Why are we in church? Why are we taking a special 24 hours to pause, to reflect, to remember? and to worship God. Being in church on Saturday morning to check off the box of going to church on Sabbath is not honoring God. The Sabbath is all about love. Sabbath is done out of love. The love of what God has done for us, and what He has promised to do in the future. When you are asked about the Sabbath, what will you reply? Sabbath is for celebration, for joy and thanksgiving. When we keep the Sabbath, we indicate that we believe God's promises, that we accept His gift of grace. Sabbath is faith alive and vibrant. The Sabbath points them to the works of creation as an evidence of His mighty power in redemption. While it calls to mind the lost peace of Eden. It tells of peace restored through the Savior. And every object in nature repeats his invitation, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew 11, 28